Hello, this is Dr. Norman Thomas, and welcome to tonight's edition of Power Talk. We'll be right back. One of the most powerful things a child can do is learn to read. Reading brightens the imagination, expands one's capacity, and releases a child's potential. Dr. Debbie Thomas has launched the Give a Child a Book initiative. Let's join Dr. Debbie and bless children this Christmas with wonderful new reading material. We are receiving new books at 3000 East Goche Road, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Or for more information, call us at 337-433-1111. Every child deserves the power of reading. Thank you. We're very excited about this opportunity that we have to bless the children of our community right here in Southwest Louisiana. We're trying to get the word out to as many people as possible so that on this coming weekend, as you heard in that announcement and the upcoming announcements, we're having New Life Weekend out here. And part of that is to distribute these books to children. And so we're asking uh, parents to come out with your kids do the drive through and get your book bag. And in that bag will be some other things that will be a blessing to your children. And so Dr. Debbie has, has uh, done this, this initiative for several weeks now and hundreds of books have come in and we're still receiving books. Even as recent as today, we had people drop off books here at the church. And so we're very excited about this and we want you to be a part of it. To me, this is what it's about. It's having a spirit of generosity, being able to be a blessing, especially during challenging times. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Genesis chapter 12 that we are to be blessed so that we can be a blessing to those around us. That even that passage of scripture, if you read verses one through four, something like that, it calls us Distrib distributors, that we're distributors of the good of God. And we want to be just that in this community especially and even around the world. I'm very excited about what's happening here at New Life Church. Even during the challenging times that we're facing here in this region, we're still pushing out the gospel like never before. More nations have opened up to the school of faith, the nation of Sudan, the nation of of Egypt, the nation of the Philippines, and the nation of Ghana have opened up to us through the School of Faith Bible Institute. And we're having meetings with these leaders in these different countries and schools, even in the United States, as recent as the one that opened up in Fayetteville, uh, North Carolina. So uh, we're excited about what God is doing, and we want you to continue being a part of it through your praying through your participation and through your giving. Now they say this is the time of year that we give. Well, for us as believers, all year is the time of year that we give because we live out of a spirit of giving. And I'm talking about that on Sunday mornings. And so I want you to take a moment and prepare your heart to participate in uh, to participate financially in the work that we're doing here locally and around the world. So I want to pray with you and because we believe in declaring and decreeing over our giving because that's how the Bible teaches us to do, that we should speak life to our giving, to speak life to what we call our seed. And we plant that seed or we give those finances in to an expressed work of God. And that's what you're doing tonight through your tithes and your offerings, your giving, you're giving right into the work of God. So, Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity to give and for the engagement that we participate in as we give tonight, that lives are being changed, lives are being blessed. Help us to be a blessing to as many children this year as we can possibly be, as we give books and as we give life and as we give your love to them this Christmas. Thank you, Lord. For every child, every family that comes through this campus this weekend, that they will sense the love of God as they do so. In Jesus' name, amen. I declare your seed blessed and empowered to prosper right back into your hands in the form of a harvest that God will send to you. Listen, 
We'll be right back in just a moment. I have a very special guest tonight. You don't want to miss it. I'll be right back. In John 3.16, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave to the world his only begotten son. This is one of the most powerful times of the year when people's minds and their hearts are on giving. Giving is one of the most powerful forces in the universe. It will literally transform you as an individual as you surrender to this power of giving. Your giving should be motivated the same way, by your love for humanity. Let your love guide you in your giving this Christmas season. So look around you. Everywhere is an opportunity to give. Giving is the ultimate of living. We're looking forward to our next New Life Weekend, Saturday, December 19th, and Sunday, December 20th. Join us as we distribute goods to our local community. Bless the children with Dr. Debbie's Give a Child a Book initiative and fellowship around the word and worship as we receive communion during our Christmas service. On Sunday, December 20th, our Christmas service will start at 9.30 a.m. prior to our community distribution. We are looking forward to seeing you. Giving is simple and secure. If you'd like to give, just text the word GIVE to our giving number and tap the link. From here, you can give any amount you'd like. Choose what you give to and make it a one-time or recurring gift. It's that simple. For your first time, you'll need to register to complete your gift. After that, you can give again, anytime, anywhere. Just text the word GIVE. So I want to thank you for your giving. And I now I want to get into our subject tonight as we begin uh, talking about the gift. You know, this is the Christmas season and we talk about gifts and buying gifts and it's so commercialized that we fail to remember the essence of giving and the essence of being gifted. And that's what I want to look at tonight as we began our talk. Well, welcome to Power Talk, and I have with me a very special guest, one of the pastors here at our church, Pastor Glenn Coleman. Thank you for being with us here tonight. It's my pleasure, sir. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to have you. I appreciate you joining the set tonight as we talk about the gift and talk about what it means to be gifted, helping people recognize how to recognize their gift. Yeah. I think that's important. Yeah, it is very important. And, and in the season of gift giving, um, recognizing, you know, just as Christ, you know, this season that we celebrate is really about, um, you know, and this, I tell my daughters this all the time, of course, you know, really it's, it's this season is not about you getting, it's, it's we're celebrating the ultimate gift, uh, which is Christ. That's right. You know, and, you know, going, taking it back to um, Genesis, we were made in the image and likeness of God. So if God, Christ, came into this world as a gift, then how much more should we look at ourselves? You know, I, I know we, you know, people used to joke when, when you were little, uh -huh. you just think you're God's gift. Yeah, yeah, you know, that's right. But in actuality, you are. I am. That's <laughs> you right. Know? That's so, right. Yeah. Well, I want to open up with this passage of Scripture. It's found in the book of Romans, chapter 11 and verse 29. And we're reading it from the Amplified Translation. It says, for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. He never withdraws them when once they're given. And he does not change his mind about those to whom he gives. He, uh, he, he doesn't change his mind about those to whom he gives his grace or to whom he sends his call. I think that is a very powerful passage of scripture because, you know, there are people that recognize they, they, there's, there's something different about them. There's something special about them. They, they recognize that. Mm -hmm. And some, some people are very confident in the fact that they are gifted. Yeah. But then you have people who don't feel that way. Yeah. They, don't, they don't feel that way. And that's probably the result of some past stuff and mm -hmm. just mindset Absolutely. and things like that. But then there are people that feel that somehow they know they 
or gifted, or in their framework, they would say, I was gifted, mm -hmm. but somewhere along the way, the gift lifted, mm -hmm. or God took it, mm -hmm. or it's, you know, I, I'm being punished by God for mm -hmm. something I did, mm -hmm. and because I did that, I'm not worthy anymore of that gift that I once had on my life. I want to talk to those people okay. tonight. Can you help me do that? Yeah, absolutely. So I think the, the first thing um, is understanding what the gift actually is. Um, and I think you maybe talked about this last week a little bit. You know, a lot of times we, we think of the gift as what we do, mm -hmm. but the gift is not what we do. The gift is who we are. Yes. Okay. And so there's no, the, the, you cannot take away uh, the essence. It, it would be like me saying, um, taking away the H from H2O. Uh -huh. Because without the H, water, that molecule would not no longer exist. The gift that we're talking about is just like that. It's, it's, it's your essence. It's, it's who you are. Um, I, I told you earlier, I have a friend, Mark Dunwall. He, he calls it your GNA, your God-named authenticity. Mm. It's the very thing that makes you who you are. So um, even though there may be, uh, that may have been covered up due to circumstances, situations, or maybe a life that you, lead, that you were leading or mm -hmm. whatever that is, but that never goes away. It may become dormant in you. It may, uh, it, the, the, if you will, the light may be dimmed a little bit, Yes. but it never goes away. And um, as soon as you recognize that, um, you have the ability inside of you to turn it back on. Right. Yeah. Right. You know, um, to me, it's like one, one of the things that, that really keeps people from full recognition is is equating their gift with, with a tangible expression, mm -hmm. like a talent or a skill. And because we've sort of used the term gift and talent interchangeably mm -hmm. yeah. to almost mean the same thing, but they're far from, from the same thing. Mm -hmm. I, I use this analogy, say like a tree, uh, say an apple tree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have an apple tree in your yard People come visit, they see apples. Oh, they look at those apples, that's a beautiful tree. But no one compliments the root system. Mm -hmm. And if you, you do away with that root system, yeah. you don't have a tree, you don't have apples. Yeah. So it's like those apples are symbolic of the, of the skills and the talents that people have. Mm -hmm. But those skills and those talents are not actually the gift. Yeah. They're coming from the gift. They're expressions. Yeah of the gift, and I believe that just as the root system of that tree penetrating through that, that stem produces all of those apples, that's how powerful the gift is inside of us and the potential of the gift to produce all, yeah. so many expressions that yeah. can, can't be counted, yeah. you know? And so I, I just, I, I, I want people to understand that there is a level that is unseen. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's in that spirit being, it's in that, that inner you, like you said, you're looking for an expression, but you, you are that gift. Yeah. Your spirit man is that gift that's been placed on this earth to be expressed. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's, it's I think just our, our society, our culture, we put so much value on the apples. Yeah. And everybody wants the apples. Right. But everybody can't produce the apples because they don't have that root system. So I think maybe even in, when you were talking earlier, this is not one of the scriptures we discussed earlier, but this is, uh, this is 1 John chapter 2 and verse 27. Okay. And it says, um, this is in the Amplified Bible, it says, As for you, the anointing, the special gift, the preparation which you received from him remains permanently in you and you have no need for anyone to teach you but just as his anointing teaches you giving you insight through the presence of the holy spirit about all things mm. 
and is true and not a lie. Just as his anointing has taught you, you must remain in him and be rooted in him and knit in him. Wow. So in the King James, the, uh, the word that they use is unction. And uh, I, I found that scripture. I was, um, it, it's a kind of a long story, but mm -hmm. I went to this meeting, the uh, church service, and I was just like searching. And I'm like, I'm searching. And, and the pastor stood up and he was like, you, brother, he's like, <laughs> the Lord told me to tell you this. And, you know, so I'm like, whoa, you know. But he told me this. He said, function in the unction. Okay. And when he said that, I'm like, okay, well, what is? What in the so world? I went, I got home, I got out my, my Strong's Concordance. Yep. And I looked up the word unction and I found that scripture. So when we talk about the gift, we're, we're, we're getting back to the, what is it, the lowest common denominator, maybe, mm -hmm. or to the root. Yes. And it's that unction. It's that thing. And when I, when I think about the word unction, it's that thing that drives you. It's the thing that you can do without even trying to do. Yes. But when you do it, everyone around you is impacted and lives are changed when you do this, this thing. It's the thing that, um, that, that you do better. And, and when I say do, don't think of Sing or write or you no, know, it's it's deeper than that. It, yeah, it it's is. it's a spiritual thing that you do. When you do it, everything around you is impacted by it and made better. And the other part of it is that you do it at a at a level where other people they may do it, but you yes, do it. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. Right. We were talking earlier about teachers. Yeah, great and, example. And like all of us have that that teacher. That teacher. That made the impact on our life mm -hmm. because of that thing, that mm -hmm. unction that they carried. Yeah. That they could do it in a way that all the other teachers mm -hmm. could not do. I mm -hmm. mean, they did their job, but they didn't function right in that unction. Yeah. So they had the same information that everybody else had. Mm -hmm. But it's just the, the way they could see into their students and, and formulate. Um, I, I was talking with a, with a friend of mine, um, and he's a um, very, very great saxophone player. Mm -hmm. And he said another friend was talking to him, and he said, you know, you, know, you, may, you need to be on stage with your saxophone. Mm. And he said, I'm a great saxophone player. He said, but I'm a phenomenal teacher. Wow. And when the, the guy was like, what are you talking about? He said, and it wasn't until he came to my classroom to see me teach. So that thing that was in him, it made him great on stage. But it's, it's like, it's, it's when, he, when, when, when he teaches kids, like he, he would speak to a kid and they would just light up. Mm -hmm. Because it, it's not about, and that's the stuff, I mean, you can't go to school to learn this. Mm -hmm. You can't go to school to learn how to discern what a child needs, because it goes beyond the curriculum, right? right. And so that's what everything in life, it, it goes beyond just the, the learning. Like that scripture said, it's like, no man taught you this. Right. Now you may have gone to school, you got the information, you, you Googled it or whatever, but no one taught you the, the finesse that you put on it. That, that just can't be taught. And, and we see it all the time. We see it all the time. You know, you hear someone sing, you yeah. know, and okay, they're singing, but then someone else singing, and it's something that resonates with you because right. that's the unction. Yes. You know, it's more than just a talent. That's right. You know. That's right. It speaks to your inner man. Yeah. Now, so what I hear a lot, you do too, is this person saying, well, how do I know my gift? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I know what it is that I've been placed here to do? And, you know, if you just show it to me and I'll do it, mm -hmm. you know, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. It's a revelation. Yeah. It's something that's revealed, open, disclosed to you in your pursuit of it. Mm -hmm. And so this is where it brings us back to God because it's, it's this thing that we're talking about, it really, you can tap it without God mm -hmm. because he gave it to you and it, he, he dropped it inside of you. But you can't reach the fullest potential of it without God. Yeah. You can't be it or provide what it provides ultimately 
without the creator. I have here in James chapter 1 and verse 17. I don't know if I gave the producer that, that scripture either, but <laughs> it's James chapter 1 verse 17. It says, every good gift and every perfect gift. Now in the Amplified, it puts in parentheses every free, large, full gift mm. is from above. It comes down from the Father of all that gives light in the shining of whom there can be no variation, no rising, no setting, no shadow cast by his turning uh, as an eclipse. But w and, and that's a lot there. But what I wanted people to see and hear was that God gives. He gives. He gives us. Mm -hmm. And when he gives us, he gives us good in a good way mm -hmm. and in a perfect way. Yeah. It's perfection. And so when a person taps that, it's a perfect, it's a perfect coming together of that individual and the thing that they were created to do. Yeah. I just believe that people that don't know what that is and that they're trying to figure that out and trying to find that, they're not resting mm -hmm. in who they are and they're certainly not resting in hearing from the Father who created them. Yeah. You go back to the manufacturer. It, exactly. Right? Yeah. You go yeah. back to the manufacturer. Yeah, because there, there are some things, you know, there, there are so many. Uh, perfect example is like the iPhone. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure that no one has ever read <laughs> an instruction manual <laughs> for the iPhone. But most people use, they don't use the iPhone to its, its fullest, fullest potential. You know, and so now they got this new thing called like tips. Yeah. So every now and again, it'll tell you, did you know you could, you know, like the one with the uh, space bar, you could hold it down and move it and scroll the curse. I'm like, man, I've been trying to do that. <laughs> but that's how our gifts are. A lot of times we, we, can, we can do some things, right. but it, it's, it's at its optimal. We function at our, it, the gift functions at its optimal level mm. when we are connected to the creator, yes. the person who, who invented the thing, the person who knows all the ins and outs. And he can tell you if you just tweak this one thing right here, you know, it'll it'll increase it, you know, a, a hundredfold. Right. You know, so I think that that's what you know you were talking about earlier about, um, you know, it's it's we we can function in it, and, and we we like I said we see it all the time even in in the secular arena, we you can see it, but it's not optimized. Yeah. And one of the reasons, one of the things that optimization does with your gift is it, it takes it from me focus to world focus or others focus. Mm -hmm. And that's, mm -hmm. I think that's one key indicator when, 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 when your gift is not being optimized. Because if, if, if your gift is, is only benefiting me. Yes. The gift is not is never designed. The gift, your gift, wasn't designed for you. It was designed for the world. Right. You are the gift. That's right. You know. That's yeah. right. So that's one way a person can tell if they're functioning yeah. in their gift because the the motivation for the use of that gift mm -hmm. is is others oriented. Yeah. As as opposed to self self oriented. Right. Well, I just believe that we're living in a time where there's a lot of confusion in the world and, and, and people are asking all kinds of questions. I mean, this, this, this thing is just going wild. <laughs> and where we, where we must be centered is in God's design for our lives. And in God's design for our lives, he, he didn't just write a script and say, now you obey that script. He wrote a script to escort you into a place of freedom and a place of liberty and a place of production in this world so that you become, as Pastor Galen indicated, uh, a resource and a source of blessings for others. Now I want to read uh, another passage of scripture here that I think... Uh, we could uh, probably use it to sort of explain some more about this gift, Pastor Glenn. It's in Matthew 13 and verse 12. And I'm also going to read this to you in the Amplified Translation as well. 
It says, for whoever has spiritual knowledge, to him more will be given, and he will be furnished richly so that he will have abundance. But from him who has not spiritual knowledge, even what he has will be taken away. Now, as we said earlier, there are people that focus on the apples mm -hmm. because that's what you can see, that's what you can hold, that's what you can taste, that's what, that's what people set their value base on, mm -hmm. how many apples on your tree, right. you know. But people don't focus on the root. Mm -hmm. And this scripture talks about having two levels of possession. Whoever has spiritual knowledge will have, uh, will have riches or mm -hmm. furnish richly in abundance. But for him who does not have spiritual knowledge, he will not, whatever he has will be taken away. So that's, there's two degrees of possession. Mm -hmm. And to me, when people are in pursuit of a gift or a talent, without the spirit, without the unseen, without God. What ends up happening to them is that they end up on these rabbit trails in life, mm -hmm. going after this, going after that, this looks good, this sounds good. They're looking at somebody else's gift mm -hmm. and they're trying to imitate that or trying to replicate that, thinking that that might be the gift for me. Mm -hmm. Can we talk to people about that? Is there something that you would say to somebody that thinks that way? Could, because basically what that boils down to is somebody trying to bypass the spiritual side of this mm -hmm. just to get to the tangible side of this, only to be disappointed over and over and mm -hmm. over again. These are people that start things and quit, start things mm -hmm. and quit. Oh, this is it. This is the big thing. And then two months later, that's over, or a year later, that's over. Now they're on some other kick mm -hmm. because they're not, they're not registering with the value mm -hmm. and the treasure that they have. Yeah, and I think it goes to understanding every scripture we, we read about the gift, it implies you. And it's your gift is, 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 or you are a, a unique individual, right? Yeah, yeah. And so when we look at the other apples and we try to produce that, maybe your root system isn't designed to produce that. Exactly. You know, and, and you're doing, not only are you doing yourself a disservice, but you're now doing the world because, you know, the world has the Granny Smith apples, but maybe they need the delicious. Right. And you're the, you, you got what I'm saying? Yes. And yeah. so I think part of that is just really uh, being okay because sometimes, and I know I, I've experienced this before, you know, even for myself, because when, when my gift doesn't show up the way I see it in others, mm -hmm. it, can, it can be intimidating, especially if you've only seen you've only seen it done this way, or we talked about uh, before we started, you know, especially when it comes to in the church setting, you know, sometimes your gift may not fit within the four walls of the church. And That's so, right. you know, and so a lot of times what we do is when we have a gift and it doesn't fit, you know, uh, you know, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. the church, if you don't sing or exactly. you don't preach right. or if you, you then we, we try to make our gift fit one of those wouldn't you, roles. Wouldn't you say that's been one of the failures of the church? A absolutely. You know, not being able to, to reach, I mean, just think about all the people sitting out there mm -hmm. in the pew or in the seat or in the chair. And, and, but in a, in a typical church, religious church setting, the only valuable thing is what you can do that looks like ministry. Yeah. As we've been told ministry is. Yeah. And if you don't, like you said, preach, sing, pray, shout, mm -hmm. spit, whatever, <laughs> then then you're not, you're, this circle doesn't work for you or you're not, so you're subservient in a sense to all the other folk that are up on the stage yeah. doing their thing. And some of them, I mean, you know, we look this granted that people are anointed, they're gifted Absolutely. to do to Absolutely. preach, to pray, to sing. But the vast majority of people in a sanctuary, but, so, so who's going to speak to their gift? Yeah, yeah. You, you know what the ironic thing about that is? that mm. When you really read Ephesians, I think it's four, those ministry gifts, uh -huh. the scripture says this, that he gave those five gifts uh -huh. for 
the equipping of the saints yep. for the work of the ministry. Right. So when you really look at that, what he's really saying is that that's the, the preaching, the teaching, the apostle, the, the evangelist, right. that's really not the ministry. Right, right. The ministry is what the peop the saints are, are being equipped to do outside of those that's right. Those those five, five. ministry gifts, right? Yes. So, you know, it, it, and and so we, we have to we have to do a better job of allowing people or, or just telling or showing people how to how to do that and how to show up that way. And it, it, if it doesn't fit into, because of course we need the, the ministry gifts, right? Exactly. But to let them know if it doesn't fit here, it's okay. You're not forgotten. That just means that you're, you're, you, you're, you're designed to show up out there a certain way that's going to be way more effective than a, a sermon, you know, could ever be, you know, from here. Because from this stage, and that's, you know, this is one of the beauties I love about, you know, Facebook Live is we, we're sitting here and no one's physically in the room, uh -huh. but we're talking to yes. potentially literally millions, yeah. maybe even billions of people all over the world. Right. But but we can't reach everybody from because there's there are certain people who are never gonna watch this programming just based on the, the fact that it is Christian program. Right. Right? So how do we reach you know the world? It's through us equipping the saints or the the, the, the body of Christ to cultivate and nurture and and teaching them how to recognize the gifting that's on the inside of them out in the world in the marketplace or whatever however you want to you know refer to that and how to use that gift to reach other people to reach other people or and the, benefit uh -huh. other because here's here's the thing is if if I understand how to do that and now I'm impacting people in my workplace and I'm showing people in my workplace how to love I'm showing people and, and this doesn't mean that I'm having Bible studies, you know, yeah. on my lunch break. Right. It's I'm, I'm, I'm literally living out the gift inside of me and teaching people. And, and just imagine if I can change a father's heart who is getting ready to leave his family. Yes. And, you know, him, him and the, the wife are getting ready to, to be divorced. If, if I can influence him by way of the Holy Spirit through, through living being a living epistle and, and employing the gift, like the word of God says, and him falling in love with Jesus, falling back in love with his wife, being a better, a better father to those kids, then those kids turning around and yeah. doing the same thing to their kids. It's like, that's, that's, this is how we change the world. That's right. And I always say the, the, the world is not changed from the, from the pulpit, it's changed from the pew. Yes, yes. And so that can that can that can translate into so many varieties of expression from say sports and entertainment, absolutely. Uh, science and technology, absolutely. Education, finances, yeah. you know, uh, like you express family, uh, family uh, measures. There's just so many different ways. So you got all of these different facets of anointings, gifts, mm -hmm. and, and things going on when people come to a church mm -hmm. on a Sunday or whenever that if we don't take full advantage of that moment to empower them, like you say, the five ministry gifts were designed for the equipping of the saints yeah. for the work of the ministry, mm -hmm. then they basically have a mindset of just coming here and saying, okay, what talk, you know, yeah. do something for me, make yeah. me feel better mm -hmm. so I can go out and be pumped up and excited mm -hmm. about next week. And no. e even that uh -huh. lets you know the gift is not optimized. Because earlier we said that you know it's optimized when it's for, it's not just for me. Right. So that attitude you just described is you're yeah. coming here to say, Make me feel better. Right. You know, make, make my life better. But no, I'm coming here. So yes, I can be better, but I want to be better so I can reach others better. And if you are better, don't you feel better? Y you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You do. And so I, I come here to be equipped mm -hmm. so that I can go out and do the service, do 
the minute, whatever field I'm in, yeah. keeping mindful of the fact that I am a kingdom citizen first, mm -hmm. and I have a I have the assignment through the gift that I carry to affect and to affect change in the lives of people. Absolutely. And to benefit their lives. Absolutely. On God's behalf. Yeah. So that they can look back and say, oh man, you know, this, I like this. This is what I need. This is the relationship with God that I need in my yeah. life. And ultimately replicate that process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There, there, there's a, um, a poem, I, I love this. It's by a lady in my, by the name of uh, Marianne Williamson. Uh, and I don't know the name of it, but there's a line she says that, uh, I can't remember exactly how she says it, but basically says, when you learn how to shine or, or be authentically you, you unconsciously give others permission to do the same. That's beautiful. Yeah. And that's powerful. Yeah. And so I think that's what it is. It's sometimes, it, and that's, that's the beauty of the gift, is that we think that the, you have to do something. You don't have to do something. Mm -hmm. all. Sometimes... It's just you showing up mm -hmm. and being your authentic yeah. self. Just being there yeah. can produce change in someone. And the, the thing is, they don't even know why they're... It's like, I don't... I don't. And right. people will say something like, you know, it's like when you're around me, yeah. it's just, I just feel this, this just peace. Yeah. That's the gift. Yeah. You know? Yes. And, and it's, it's just the, the thing that you do you just you just show up that yeah. way, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, I want you to pray uh, with those that are watching and those that will be watching okay. this, and uh, that they will uh, be put on a path mm -hmm. uh, to to discover their gift. Okay. You can use that camera. Okay. So, Father, we just thank you right now for everyone that's watching, uh, whenever they're watching this, um, and. Um, Father, you made all of us. Yeah. So there's a place in every person that has the unction, that has the gift. So Holy Spirit, I just ask right now that you would just begin to stir that up. Uh, bring us back. Bring them back to their, to their childhood, to, to the, the time when... Uh, they were filled with joy and anticipation, yeah. and they they recognized that there was something unique about themselves. Before, uh, bring them back to before uh, life happened. Uh, take them back to when um, they they could they could feel uh, feel your heartbeat on the inside of them. And and I just ask that as you do that, Holy Spirit, that you would just begin to uh, just to speak, uh, breathe life and. Speak life over that area of themselves, over that gift in, inside of them. Yes. Uh, I thank you that you're developing a, a divine curiosity yes. uh, uh, as to what, what their gift is. Why are they here on the earth? What is their calling? Um, and just to begin to stir that up on the inside of them uh, and to bring them to a place, uh, bring them into circles, into communities uh, that will help them nurture that um, and, and to... Help them be the persons, the people that you have called them to be, and in turn, uh, allowing them to change every person around them, change the world around them, and function in the unction, uh, and, and just change the world for better. In Jesus' name, in amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we want to thank you. I want to thank you for Absolutely. being with us tonight, and we want to thank you for joining us. We want you to share this link. Share this with somebody that you know it will be a blessing to. Let's try to spread this gospel to as many people as possible simply, but we got all the tools right there before us in technology. Just share. And by that, you are sharing the gospel with someone else. And somebody else's life is going to be benefited because of the time that they took to just listen in on this session tonight, Power Talk. We're talking about gift on demand. There's a gift inside of you. God would not have placed you on this earth unless he also planted the seed of gifting inside of you. And you may not know what it is. You may not recognize the fact that that is true, but it doesn't change the fact that that is true. So now you should be on a path to discovery concerning what God has put in you. You don't have to decide anything. The only thing you decide is to embrace what you discover with God because he's giving you so much. And, 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 and I know that sometimes these words sound empty, 
because uh, the magnitude of the challenges that you may be facing and the hardship that you've endured and how many times you've been told that you couldn't or that, you're, that you don't amount to anything. But we're just telling you the truth, that you have something powerful inside of you that no one else can control but you. And God did it like that on purpose so that you can come up out of whatever despair you're in and be the man or the woman that he's created you to be. It's been my pleasure to have this time with you. Until next time, this is Dr. Norman Thomas saying, keep walking by faith. John 3.16, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave to the world his only begotten son. This is one of the most powerful times of the year when people's minds and their hearts are on giving. Giving is one of the most powerful forces in the universe. It will literally transform you as an individual as you surrender to this power of giving. Your giving should be motivated the same way, by your love for humanity. Let your love guide you in your giving this Christmas season. So look around you. Everywhere is an opportunity to give. Giving is the ultimate of living. We're looking forward to our next New Life Weekend, Saturday, December 19th, and Sunday, December 20th. Join us as we distribute goods to our local community. Bless the children with Dr. Debbie's Give a Child a Book initiative and fellowship around the word and worship as we receive communion during our Christmas service. On Sunday, December 20th, our Christmas service will start at 9.30 a.m. prior to our community distribution. We are looking forward to seeing you. Giving is simple and secure. If you'd like to give, just text the word GIVE to our giving number and tap the link. From here, you can give any amount you'd like. Choose what you give to and make it a one-time or recurring gift. It's that simple. For your first time, you'll need to register to complete your gift. After that, you can give again, anytime, anywhere. Just text the word GIVE.